Maybe instead of going to a tennis court, a basketball court, going for a run, going to the gym, going to the YMCA, or engaging in karate, or physical combat, maybe it would be best to attend a debate room, a debate club, a book club. Being the freedom writer, writing for a newspaper, maybe going into politics. But it's up to you to use the high road or the low road, the higher side or the lower side. Nobody else is making that decision for you. You are the one who needs to choose at the crossroads of life of how you're going to best use the energy of Mars and Gemini. I'm Everett Curdy, and welcome to this video. Please subscribe, like, share, and hit the bell so that you don't miss any more videos from me that will be upcoming, potentially. This is such a huge video. Um, so, because it is, um, I just want to take a moment and breathe. So, okay. So anyway, I'm not going to, you know, get into meditation on this video. I just wanted to do that because, A, this is so significant of what I'm talking about, and B, it kind of corresponds to what I'm going to be talking about, and I'll get into that. So, Mars, you know, the day that um, Mars is going to be entering Gemini is going to be on August 20th. And so it's going to enter Gemini, zero degrees, and then on October um, 31st, on Halloween, it's going to go retrograde back through um, several um, many degrees of Gemini. It's going to station direct on January 12th, 2023, and then on March 25th, it is going to move on into Cancer. So let's just start with Gemini. Gemini is the first air sign of the zodiac. It's very, very mental. It deals with the mental realm, the intellect, um, communications, all of the budgets, and all of the data that you can collect in your environment and sort of gather all those points up. You know, identifying those small little details like the light on my desk, the books, um, you know, in your shelf, your community, your neighbors, your close circle of friends, the people who are invited to a Thanksgiving party in the middle of May in which somebody will say something quite disturbing and then the whole party will be turned off. The wedding with the piano and the, the flowers, um, you know, all kinds of flowers, including roses. You know, I'm kind of going off. But Gemini is very much about the mind, and I'm opening up my mind. I want to open up my mind, and I want to liberate myself when I do these videos. And I want to be creative. Um, as well. So Gemini deals with 
conversation of having so many ideas that you're thinking of and you're just really really trying to get all those ideas out you know it's so overwhelming because i'm thinking of doing this i'm thinking of doing that you know make a list or on a google document um, or a physical list write it down organize your life prioritize discern what you should and shouldn't do what's more important and less important what really, really matters, um, you know, not getting scattered in, um, you know, in one direction and then another direction with all of that life has to offer um, to where you're a jack of all trades, but an expert at none um, or skilled or talented um, at none. And, um, yeah, so this could be, you know, square to Mercury in Virgo, um, on August 20th and Virgo does have to do with that organization and structure. You know, I'm, I don't want to walk into somebody's room that's all messy and has clothes scattered around and, and if I need to study for a test the next day, I certainly don't want to be in an environment with um, somebody, you know, rushing around doing this thing, doing that thing, a dog barking, and to where there's clutter and somebody isn't really getting their mind in gear and, um, you know, prioritizing, you know, the tasks on the list to get done and um, really having a system or a machine in a factory that works as opposed to just the idea and the look and the new thing that's in style. Let's get real with Mercury in Virgo. Um, you know, how is it going to work? You know, do the gears, are the gears going to function? Is it going to produce rice or is it going to produce pasta? Or, you know, whatever the function of it is, because then it has to be marketed out to people and people are going to use it in their recipes or, you know, whatever that topic is. You know, that's just kind of general. Um, and, um, yeah, so Gemini... Um, is also very uh, adaptable, you know, can start this thing. It's very, very good at multitasking. So you have, you know, this pot on the burner, and then you have this, um, this bread in the oven you need to manage while cooking, or you have, uh, you know, just in general, one thing going on here, you know, like, not at this time of year, but, you know, especially for a big meal like Thanksgiving, as I referenced earlier, because it involves so many dynamics and so many different areas and dishes and pots and pans. And this is going to cook longer than this. And this is going to have to be put more intense pressure on when it comes to cooking than this. So there's so many different uh, dynamics with cooking, but also just managing life in general. Um, and Gemini is also a sign that needs that variety. Boredom, you know, absolutely not. You know, and for me personally, I don't enjoy shopping unless I need or want something. I don't enjoy standing around waiting for somebody else to select what they need to select and look at this and examine this. Uh, it's so boring when I'm just standing around um, and waiting and not being bored, um, you know, being bored um, is um, what I wanted to say and just kind of the same routine. And Virgo deals with the routine. Gemini just wants to throw the routine um, away where it's the same old, it's the same old. It feels limiting. It's stale. It, you know, there's not enough spark or juice or pizzazz or flavor to it. 
um, and Gemini wants to spice it up. Gemini does want to change it up. So Mars and Gemini, well, redecorating your house. That's changing it up. Um, and so, yeah, you know, things, you know, with Mars and Gemini, there has to be um, that, um, you know, variety, something new. And I have Mars and Gemini in my own natal chart because I have it up here, if you can't see. And if I'm looking at Mars and Gemini, Mars and Gemini. So I have this placement. And, uh, yeah, I, um, I really don't like to be bored and I don't see, you know, I'm Mars and Gemini. If somebody were to ask me, Hey, what is your career? What do you want to do in your life? What's your job? What's your position? Here's my answer. Many different things. I may start doing this. I may start doing that, and I get very annoyed when I'm asked, you know, what do you want to do when you, um, you know, grow up, and what do you want to, you know, major in in college, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, uh, several things. For example, I see myself being a musical choral composer. I see myself being an author. I see myself being um, a chef, maybe, um, an astrologer, um, you know, a spiritual teacher, I mean, all these different types of things. And Gemini isn't just one thing. It's a whole buffet of different things. Um, you know, I want a little bit of this. I want a little bit of that. I want the, the best of both worlds. It's very Gemini because Gemini is two and it does have to do with twins and, um, you know, that duality um, of Gemini as well. So kind of dabbling, you know, it does, um, you know, dabble in these little things. So it also deals with possibly having split focus where your focus divides your focus on this goal this project this goal and that project over here so um you know it also has to do and we're going to look at this theme when we talk about the retrograde mars and gemini is dealing with stimulus of the information, be it from people, be it from an article that you're reading online, be it from a book that you're reading, being very aware and conscious of the information that you're taking in is very critical at this time and how it's making you feel. Is it uplifting you? Is it um, bringing you joy? Is it bringing you uh, calm and peace? Um, do you feel nourished by the videos that you're watching, by um, what you're reading, who you're uh, engaging with, what you're, the um, page on Facebook that you're following, um, somebody's TikTok account, um, and um, yeah, you know, that becomes very, very important you know, without getting into the specifics, um, you know, someone that I know of has this really, really expensive course and I get um, emails from this person. And in these emails, which are so beautifully decorated, designed, and um, set up. And it really, really is very persuasive and it almost makes me feel guilty or um, just it really 
pulls me out of gratitude for what I have already. Um, it causes FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, and it just kind of puts the emotions of kind of disappointment and maybe a little anger and jealousy in the system as well. And so I have had to unsubscribe from those emails because I don't need that in my life. Um, it's not possible now. I can't afford the course. I really, really want to um, and see myself doing it. But I needed to detach from that and I need to detach from it uh, in the present. So I thought that I would um, make a reference to that. And so Mars and Gemini also deals with verbal assertion as well. Um, you know, again, debating, you know, I have my side and I'm going to defend my stance and I'm going to have solid evidence and present a very, very strong case. Um, where there's tactics to get people on your side, persuade people um, with the gift of the gap. Um, you know, Mars and Gemini, you know, definitely know what to say and do it, you know, this time, um, you know, to get people um, on your side. And, you know, you know, Adolf Hitler, how, you know, he was a terrible person with uh, the things that he did, um, but he was very persuasive standing up there and shouting and screaming um, Mars, anger, passion, Gemini, words, standing up and making a speech. You know, you put those together and you find Mars and Gemini. But Mars is also the planet of war, and this could be um, verbal aggression um, as well. Heated arguments um, could arise from this. Um, you know, you may, uh, you know, again, I, uh, not, you know, start something, not finish it because of, you know, just the desire of this came in really, really well when I started this, but then it just, you know, died away and then I have something else. Um, there, there could also be uh, obsessive thought patterns, uh, mental thought patterns, um, where you might have so many ideas just, you know, you know, going crazy and so many dark and maybe angry, scary, um, very, uh, cunning, sharp thoughts. And you may need to ground and meditate, um, to manage that and, and, and connect with the earth. Um, journal about what you're thinking or feeling, you know, taking your phone and pressing record and, you know, doing a video journal, um, a video diary. Um, you know, that's another thing uh, as well. And doing too many things at once. Um, biting off more than you can chew. It's very important to really bring down that list of your uh, goals and your ideas into what's most worth my time and energy and what is most important. Um, and so, you know, with the, um, you know, what I call the, you know, freedom writers of people um, writing in newspapers and speaking their truth and being 
honest about this situation is going here and making valid cases is very, very supportive for any uh, newspaper or any argumentative uh, speech or paper or um, paragraph or um, any kind of court case that may come up in life as well. Um, you know, you, you can use this energy in very um, practical and very constructive ways as opposed to destructive ways. Um, and if you've seen Anne with an E, where she writes out that, um, that newspaper about what happened at the um, fair, and, you know, I think it's season, you know, maybe season three of Anne with Indy on Netflix. You can go watch it. And uh, I'm just thinking of that because it still relates to this. And so life is probably going to speed up. There's going to be a lot of fast energy, busy energy. You're going to have so many ideas again. Um, so very important to... Breathe in, breathe out, slow everything down, be in the moment, relax, do one thing at a time, walk through your day, one foot in front of the other, and don't have to do so many things at once. You don't have to overwork yourself and overburden yourself and put stress and strain and hardship on yourself. Um, you know, less is more. Um, and being easy and gentle with yourself giving yourself time to rest and recuperate and to reflect and to fill up your well with water, metaphorically speaking. So yeah, that's another thing as well. And then Mars will station retrograde and it stations retrograde every 26 months. And so Mars is the planet of energy drive uh, assertion and ambition, and it's all about us um, initiating the new goals in our lives and going after with um, determination and strength, you know, really pushing for something to happen. It's also how we react to situations of, um, you know, something triggers us and there's some sort of, um, you know, thing in our environment that sets us off and we um, react and we go full force in the moment with that situation. Um, there's self-defense that comes in with um, this as well, you know, defending yourself, standing up for yourself and your beliefs and what you think and what you want and what you need, even. Um, and so with Mars retrograde, it would be really, really beneficial to slow down and not overwork yourself. Um, and so there could be feelings of being drained, low motivation, low energy. Um, but there could also be something brewing up in the volcano, you know, like Mount Vesuvius. How, you know, you could look in the volcano and see, um, you know, you couldn't see it, but there was something simmering and goes to the surface and it just blows up. And, you know, you know, if you look into the history of Mount Vesuvius, you can gather what happened. It's important to express anger very, um, you know, in a 
disciplined, kind, and um, gentle, constructive way, um, little by little, and being assertive instead of aggressive, like, I'm feeling this thing, and I'm experiencing this thing, I feel these emotions about this person, and, um, you know, how am I going to express that? That's the question. But not doing it in a way where you're not careful and then you blow your top. There could also be more difficulty with starting new things or those obstacle courses where you may start something and then there may be a delay or you may um, be very indecisive about, should I go for this? Should I... Um, start this and it may require extra hard work and extra force and willpower to get the new thing going. Mercury, uh, excuse me, Mars is going to be in R, in retrograde. So the R stands for uh, reflecting. So reflecting on things as opposed to, you know, taking so much action, slow down and, you know, Again, um, and really being consciously aware of how we're thinking, how we're reacting to um, of situations. Are we just exploding and um, lying or um, being impulsive or taking the time and filter and think of how we want this to come across to somebody else and is this going to hurt somebody else? Is this going to make somebody else um, feel better, feel more um, calm or um, feel more um, secure themselves or closer and more connected to you or farther apart by your words, which are weapons, by the way. Um, and so, you know, how we're thinking, how we react um, to situations, how we think and how we react, consonants, on those words that I just used. Um, maybe before reading an article online, is it really, really worth your time and energy to read through this? Um, you know, again, um, discerning, not just going into something without looking at it, you know, examining and investigating it first. Um, you know, doing that before just going in head first, just jumping into the deep end before starting off in the shallow wind of the pool. And we have... Um, you know, some big things happening, breathing in and breathing out. Um, all those things may be huge at this time. And then on September 26th, there's going to be a similar aspect. And this is going to run through the 26th through the 30th. Mars is going to try and Saturn. Trines are very, very positive. Very harmonious. Mars is going to be in Gemini. Saturn is going to be in Aquarius. Um, and you can really work up to your desires. Or if you really, really put the hard work in um, and, you know, again, do it step by step and have a lot of discipline and climbing up that mountain like the mountain goat, you can really, really, I uh, can really pay off well in the end. Um, so use this to work hard on any um, project or any, um, you know, it can be an individual project or group project, maybe individual, uh, an individual project because Mars is very, uh, looks, you know, rules areas and it's very independent sign and Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius and those are also two very independent signs. So, um, definitely, uh, and, um, yeah, you know, 
taking action and yeah, use this particular aspect to get things done and to see something through. And then on November the 15th through the 22nd of 2022, we have Mars coming into a square with Neptune. And these could be, this could present a lot of wounded feelings. Um, of feeling um, broken down, um, betrayal, like you were cheated on, like you were used and uh, manipulated or taken advantage of. Um, there could be feelings of, um, you know, feeling a victim to circumstances which are um, out of your control as well. Um, and, um, yeah, squares, again, are not easy. It may be hard to separate what's going on in reality versus going on in the, um, your own imagination, where, um, you know, I think of having a dream and having that experience being so real and then waking up and then having the, uh, that sort of feeling from that may be, you know, if you, you know, maybe if the soldier is fighting in the war and then comes back and has that PTSD, that kind of, this transit could really bring that up and not do justice to that, but uh, heighten its effects. Um, and so, you know, those are kind of the um, uh, negative aspects that you may feel drained or feel like um, giving up that that's going on for that certain circumstance. Um, it could be somebody in your close community having more power and winning in an election which you felt that you had the rights that you earn your place to win, that you deserve to win. Um, and it's really coming into uh, radical acceptance that it is going to be the light um, at the end of the tunnel. It's really, really going to help you during this particular transit. Um, and, you know, doing something that feels right in your body, right in your intuition. Um, it's also another thing with this particular aspect. Not getting, uh, there's also um, a high level importance on not getting stuck in the ghost lands of the past, um, of the nostalgia of the past and wishing that the situations in life could be different than they are at hand um, and at present. Um, not getting so caught in the fantasies that you wish that you could just snap your fingers and something could turn another way. That's not how it is. Um, that's not how it's going to be. And... You know, this could also be denial. What are you denying um, yourself that you're not uh, admitting to um, and accepting as well? So, you know, and instead of living in fear, and you come out and thrive and be the spiritual warrior with this particular square. So that is my video on Mars and Gemini. There are other aspects, but I really, really wanted to focus on what is most significant with this particular um, transit of Mars and Gemini. Direct, retrograde, and direct again. So thank you for watching. Enjoy.
and you can always go back and refer to this video time and time again.